Hello and welcome to Grace Notes, a weekly conversation about theology, music, and preaching here at the Chapel of the Resurrection at Valparaiso University. My name is Kate. I'm one of the university pastors here on campus. I'm joined today by Pastor James Wettstein, who is another university pastor here. And today we have a special guest with us, Dr. Joseph Bogner, who is an associate professor of music and university organist here at Valpo. And we're really thankful that you're helping us lead worship music this week. So thank you for you're being welcome. here with us. Glad to be here. Wonderful. Um, we are here to discuss what we're thinking about as musicians and preachers who are preparing for worship this Sunday. And we hope that as you listen in, you'll get to prepare yourself for worship, whether you're joining us here at the chapel or attending your own home congregation. Um, and we started this video today with an excerpt of the prelude that you are preparing for this week. So I'd love to hear more about why you chose this piece and what you think is interesting about it. Sure. Well, I was looking through uh, some new music I had acquired, mm -hmm. uh, and I ran across this piece by a Nigerian-born composer. Mm -hmm. His name is Fela Sholande. And the piece just seemed to have a real uh, exuberant uh, sense, of, sense of praise. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was thinking about the theme of the Sunday, which is a little more abstract, mm -hmm. and, uh, there isn't a lot of mustard seed uh, organ literature that I'm aware of. <laughs> right. uh, so I thought, okay, let's, let's really look at this. And it, at first I thought for a post loop because it's very upbeat, mm -hmm. uh, fanfare-like. But um, as I thought more about it, uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the piece today. Um, the title, Jubilate, um, Psalm 100, Jubilate Deo, um, is one of the psalms that's used as an entrance psalm for the uh, Office of Louds. So it seemed like this was more of a call to worship kind of piece and decided to use it in that, in that sense. Wonderful. Um, so that's how I came to Joseph. And did you say at the beginning that this is a new piece for you? That you yes, found? yes. What drew you to the, the music of the piece? Um, it's, it's a fascinating combination of um, Anglican-style church music uh, infused with um, Nigerian aspects, okay. including a hymn tune in the middle, a Nigerian hymn tune in the middle that kind of uh, provides the bridge material. In the piece. Oh, that's good. So it combines the Western, like classical tradition, European tradition, with African. That's Russian right. Music. That's right. So when it when it begins, um, it's a it's a very uh, direct fanfare. It sounds very much from that Anglican tradition, mm -hmm. and then that stops, and then there is a very um, direct statement of this Nigerian hymn, which itself came from uh, a folk tune. Okay. And it, uh, it has a lot of the musical elements uh, you would expect of some parallel harmonies in the left hand. Mm -hmm. It has a repeated four note pattern in the, uh, in the pedal line, and then a, a statement of the melody on top. Okay. And the composers mark this section rhythmic, so this is to be played you know, rhythmically with these syncopated rhythms and, uh, and, and folk-like melody. Okay. Then at the end, the two ideas sort of merge together. And oh, so you have beautiful. a big ending where the where the uh, the hymn tune comes back, but this time in the in the style and the registration of the opening fanfare. Fantastic. So those are some great ideas of what we can be listening for mm -hmm. as we're listening to your prelude. Yes. Is there anything else you think we should really tune into in the music? In the, in the music, uh, it's short, <laughs> uh, but uh, but it goes through these these aspects very very quickly. Yeah. I think you know listening at the end for how the the opening music and then the hymn tune come together in this combination at the end. Well, wonderful. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing, Thank you. hearing you play that. Um, anything else you want to share before I... Uh, ju just the composer uh, was, like I said, he was Nigerian born. His dates are 1905 to 1987. Okay, so quite modern. Uh -huh. He moved uh, to England in the 1930s mm -hmm. uh, and eventually became um, a fellow with the Royal College of Organists and Trinity College of Music. He did emigrate to the United States uh, later in life and took U.S. citizenship and uh, was a faculty member not only at Howard University in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. but the University of Pittsburgh. Oh, that's so fascinating. little information about him. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Well, Pastor Jim, yes. you are up to preach this I am, week. I am, yeah. um, tell us about which texts you think you'll be focusing on and, and where you're thinking. Yeah, well, this is actually an interesting pairing of texts. Um, we we are only using the epistle and the gospel reading here at the chapel these days, just mm -hmm. trying to keep the service uh, under an hour. Um, 
And so we've got this interesting pairing of uh, the Gospel reading from Mark chapter 4, beginning in verse 26, which one interpreter has described, or has labeled, the parable of the automatic seed, uh, <laughs> which I think is a really um, apt uh, insight uh, in that, uh, you know, Jesus says, you know, the kingdom of God is someone who would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed sprouts and grows. He doesn't know how it happens. And, and we might look at that and say, well, you know, given our scientific insight and our awareness of biology, we know exactly how it happens. And yet, um, we, we don't. I mean, th there is nothing. We, we can explain the, the, the mechanics of it. We can explain the biology of it. But there's nothing we do to control the way the seed works. It does its thing as its own self. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we've got this, in the gospel reading, Jesus basically saying, the rule and reign of God is coming. It's going to do its thing. Mm -hmm. It's not going to look like much when it's doing it, but it will do what it needs to do. And you really don't have any control over it. And it doesn't really need you, frankly. It's just going <laughs> to do what it's going to do, right? Mm -hmm. And this comes at the beginning of Mark, uh, as we've observed, where, the, where Jesus' um, popularity is increasing. But so is the opposition, and so we've got this anxiety about, you know, will there be forces that thwart Jesus' mission? Um, and I see Jesus saying, no, the, the, the rule and reign of God is like a seed, it goes into the ground, and it's, it, it doesn't look like anything at all, mm -hmm. but it's going to become this wondrous, wondrous uh, plant. Um, because then he, he sw takes a second swing at the seed metaphor and then talks about the mustard seed being the smallest seed ever. Uh, and then it grows into this miraculous uh, tree. Um, so you've got that in, in Mark, and then on the other hand, you've got Paul in 2 Corinthians 5 using language like this. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what they have done in the body, whether good or evil. Um, and earlier he says, um, so whether we are at home in the body or away with the Lord, we make it our aim to please him, for all must appear before the judgment seat. So you've got a gospel reading saying, you can't do anything. The rule and reign of God is going to happen yeah. uh, regardless of what you do. And then you've got Paul saying, but in light of the rule and reign of God, we are doing everything we possibly can to demonstrate our love um, for this great gift of the rule and reign of God. And then by extension for, for our neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that 2 Corinthians uh, 5 here lines up really beautifully with 1 Corinthians 13, where Paul mm -hmm. says, you know, practice love because that's the thing that you're going to be doing for eternity. So there is this sense for Paul, in spite of the fact that he's the, the great Lutheran, you know, it's just by faith, not by works uh, theologian. Um, on the other hand, Paul's very clear on the fact that the practices we engage in as disciples of Jesus and as lovers of God in the rule and reign of God have eternal ramifications because they, they, they are forming us uh, mm -hmm. for eternity. Uh, so I think it's, a, it's an interesting balance between uh, God is at work, the, you know, the, the kingdom of God comes even without our prayer. Luther says it this way mm -hmm. in his explanation of the the Lord's Prayer, but we pray in this petition that it may come among us also. So mm -hmm. the mustard seed is going to grow whether you want it to or not, but I really want to be there celebrating when it happens. Yeah. When it happens. So I think that's a really uh, beautiful pairing uh, mm -hmm. of, of, of what are initially seemingly contradictory texts. Yeah, I love how you, you have these two texts that, as you say, seem to be contradictory at first, but you're almost using them as like a Lutheran playground to right. really get into what do we mean about... Works are important, but they don't save us. Right, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I'm excited about this weekend. That's great. I'm looking forward to hearing your, your sermon once it's taken shape. And Thank you. And thanks to both of you, again, for being here today. Um, and thanks to you all for tuning in. Once again, this has been Grace Notes, and I'm Pastor Kate with Pastor Jim, Jim and Dr. Bogner. Um, we're thankful that you are here. If you have any questions or comments, or if you're having trouble finding a congregation to connect with where you are, you're always welcome to email us at chapel at velpo.edu, and we will promise to write you back. Until next week, we bid you peace, and we hope you'll stick around and enjoy hearing Yubalate by Fela Shawande, played by Dr. Wagner.